We're gonna begin with the percep, percep, percep. I hope this thing works well. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to talk about 31 hidden hotkeys in Photoshop that you've probably never heard of before, and they're not just like obscure for the sake of being obscure. I tried to pick out hotkeys that were actually really useful, and maybe you'll find some hotkeys that you can incorporate into your daily workflow as well. Uh, now, before we get into the tutorial, my good friends at Rode have sent a bunch of new microphones in and stuff over to me, so I'm trying out the Rode stuff, and if I love it, well, I guess the bulk of my recordings will now be done on Rode microphones, so a big shout out to the guys at Rode uh, for hooking me up. I really, really appreciate it, guys. Uh, anyway, with that out of the way, let's get into this tutorial. So the first thing here in Photoshop is I have this new layer um, and I'm going to grab my brush tool by hitting the letter B. Now here in my brushes panel I have under shape dynamics I have the control set to pen pressure so when I just press a little bit I get a tiny little line and when I press hard I get a, a, a pretty large line. Well if I don't want the distraction of you know that default Photoshop brush cursor I can enter precise painting mode by using the caps lock key which moves that out of the way and I can just focus on what's coming out of the brush and not some distracting uh, Photoshop brush cursor. Now just simply hit the caps lock key to get out of precise painting mode. All right, next up, there is a hotkey for clipping masks. Now, if you don't know what clipping masks are, I urge you to look into it. They're amazing. So if we go like hue saturation here and apply hue saturation adjustment layer, we desaturate uh, our entire image, but we really just want to desaturate the yellow top. Well, to create a clipping mask, the hotkey is Command Option G on the PC, of course, Control Alt G, and you can see we're now just affecting the yellow top layer. Once again, I'm going to delete this. I want to show you one more thing. Um, so you know you can fill a layer, but you can lock the transparency of a layer. So when I lock the transparency of a layer, if I fill this layer with a color using the hotkey Option Delete on the PC, this would be Alt Backspace, it's just going to fill the areas of that layer that have pixels. Well, there's actually a hotkey to do this so you don't have to lock the transparency of the layer. Again, remember, the hotkey for this particular uh, command is Option delete, that would be Alt Backspace on the PC. If you just add the Shift key to that, right? So if I add the Shift key, Alt or Option Shift delete, it's going to temporarily sort of apply that preserve transparency command to the layer and only dump in the color where pixels already are in our image. Pretty stinking cool. So that's Alt Shift Backspace for the PC or Option Shift delete for the Mac. Let's go to our next image here and take a look at something in Camera Raw. So if I apply a Camera Raw uh, filter to a smart object, or really anything, just get to Camera Raw any way you can, you can see I've got a Camera Raw filter. I'm going to double click here to open up the Camera Raw Editor. Now when we're in the Camera Raw Editor, you can quickly jump to any of these tabs using the hotkey Command Option and any number depending on the tab. So this is like Command Option 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all the way to the end. Um, on the PC, obviously Control, Alt, and the number. So if I need to get to the Sharpening tab, Command Option 3, and boom, we're here at Sharpening. If I need to get to Presets, Command Option 9. If I need to get back to the Basic, Command Option 1, and there we are. Now I've made a couple little changes here, so I'll hit OK, and this is going to bring us to our next hotkey. Now the next hotkey, once we've made an effect like this in Camera Raw, let's say we did that because we just want to boost um, the fire. So this, this new layer, really, we need to mask it and get rid of everything except the bits over the fire. So the majority of the image is going to be hidden. So it may be in the best interest of our time to begin with a layer mask filled with black. You can do this by holding down the Alt or Option key and clicking the new layer mask icon. This will give you a layer mask pre-filled with black. So you can go in with the brush tool and foreground color set to white and go ahead and paint orange uh, wherever you wish to paint orange or whatever. It's just a, a mask filled with black already instead of the default white. So it saves you a little bit of time. All right, let's move on to the next image here. And uh, one of the first things I want to show you is copying from multiple layers. So I'm just going to create a new layer here. Uh, let's say I want to copy everything here and paste it up onto a new layer or, or bits of everything, I guess. Let's grab the rectangular marquee tool and just drag out a selection, you know, kind of like this this, all right? So your your normal copy paste um, command in Photoshop in, in most of your operating system is going to be command C, control C if you're on the PC, and then you paste it. Well, if you just add the key shift, right? So if I go command shift C and then command V, so this would be control shift C on the PC, you can see up here, well, if I grab my move tool and move, we've copied everything in the stack and pasted it up here on a new layer. That's pretty cool. So we don't have to merge all of the layers together and 
and then copy one little area. It's just one little, just throw in the shift key and you're done. Now you may be looking at it saying, oh, what if I just wanted to copy the pink squares and not the background? Easy peasy. Go ahead and shut off that background layer. Command shift or control shift if you're on the PC. Command shift C and then command V to paste it. Turn on that background layer again. We can go ahead and move just our pink squares. So super easy to go ahead and do copying multiple layers. I'm going to shut these layers off now as we move on to the next hotkey, and that is being able to select an entire color channel. So you can see we have hotkeys that Photoshop displays, like Command 4, this would be Control 4 on the PC, of course, uh, is just going to bring up our green channel, and then uh, Command 5 would do the blue channel, and so on and so forth. Now, let's say we wanted to select the green channel, right? So the hotkey is Command Shift Alt, or I'm sorry, Command Shift Option. This would be Control Shift Alt and the corresponding number. So the green channel is Command Four. So we're going to go Command Shift Option Four. You can see it loads that as a selection. I'm going to hit Command Two to just take me back to my RGB composite image. And let's just throw a curves adjustment layer on here. You can see the mask has that selection that we created, right? We can just uh, boost maybe contrast. Let's go to green, kick some more green into there. Let's go to blue and pull some more yellow into it or really pull blue out of it. Uh, and also, you know what, let's just throw a couple drips of red in there while we're at it, because we can. All right, so if I shut that layer off, there's before, there's after. Now, if I hold down my shift key and just temporarily, temporarily disable the mask, we can see that it's a very powerful, very strong color effect. See, there's before, there's after. But by constraining it just to that green color channel, we get a much more subtle effect. Right? So it looks a little bit more realistic. You've just boosted the colors. Now this is particularly useful because you can load any color channel. It, maybe you just need to work in the blue color channel to adjust some things over there. You can load that as a selection. Uh, when you create an adjustment layer, that selection will be converted to a layer mask, and you can apply that adjustment layer just in the areas that uh, affect that blue color channel. So it can be very, very useful. All right, let's uh, delete this and move on. Before we get out of this image, you can very quickly turn layers on and off using the hotkey command and the comma button. So command or control comma. You can see background layer off, background layer on. You can do it with multiple layers as well. Select all these layers. I'm holding down my shift key. Command comma turns them all on. Command comma turns them all off. Really great, really super fast little hotkey. All right, let's move on. So we've got beautiful Banff National Park here. I think it's Banff at least. I almost went on my honeymoon here, but my wife decided it was too cold or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, let's uh, take a look at the brush tool. Did you know that when you're using the brush tool, you can use the comma and period keys, or maybe just think of them as the, the angle bracket keys to cycle through your brushes? Notice up here, watch up here. You can see I'm just cycling through my brushes. So, you know, hitting the arrow that goes to the right goes one direction. Hitting the arrow that goes to the left goes to the other direction in your uh, right there within your your brushes panel. So you can see we're just cycling through our brushes. Pretty cool. Uh, it's a nice little hotkey to have in your back pocket. Uh, we can also, if we if we open up, let's say, the levels adjustment, Command L, uh, and we go ahead and just boost our contrast a little bit. Whoa, we boosted it maybe a little bit too much there. Uh, great. And we throw a little bit more green into this image. Whoa, not that much green. And uh, maybe also just boost the uh, it boosts the blues in it just a touch. Hit OK. And then we realize, oh, you know what? I actually have some other images that I want to apply the same effect to. Well, if we haven't opened any other adjustments and made any changes, you can use the hotkey to open that adjustment, but add the Alt or Option key to open that adjustment with the last used settings. So instead of just Command L to open levels, if I go Command Option L, it's going to open levels with my same exact adjustments that I just used. Hey guys, let's take a quick break from enjoying our view of beautiful Banff National Park here. And I want to remind you that selling a course over on touchfit.com all about how to retouch images and just generally up your Photoshop game altogether. There's a link that appeared, I don't know, somewhere up around there. You can go check it out. That's all I'm asking you to do. Just go check out. If you really like and you pick up a copy, hey, great. It helps support the site. That's awesome. Um, but if not, that's cool too. Let's get back to the tutorial. All right, moving along to downtown Cincinnati. What if we want to apply a filter to our image? We go filter, blur, let's say Gaussian blur. Um, yeah, let's do like a 100 pixel blur, something that's just absurd. It completely destroys the image. We realize, of course, whoa, that's way too much. Let's undo that. Now, you can always reapply the filter with a simple Command or Control F, as we can see up here. It just applies your last used filter before. But what if we want to apply that filter, but not at 100 pixels? We want to be able to adjust it. Add the Alt or Option key to that Command F. So Command Option F or Control Alt F, and it's going to open up the Gaussian Blur or the last used blur dialog box, where we can knock this down and say, oh, OK, there we go. Something more like you know 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever we're doing to the background of our image, and there we go, we have the blur we need. 
Also, here with text, one of the cool things you can do, um, well, not even really with text, really with any layer that you're adding layer styles to, if we go layer, layer style, and maybe go to blending options, you can jump around to any one of these by using command or control key and any of the numbers. So one takes us to drop shadow, two does inner shadow, three does outer glow, four does inner glow. It seems to respect the pre-Photoshop CC 2015 update, um, the, the stack that they had. Um, if you remember, a drop shadow was always right at the top of that stack, and then it went like inner glow, outer glow, or whatever. I can't remember the exact order, but stroke would have been always at the end. So maybe like command or control 9, or command or control 0, there we go, which would be 10. It takes us to stroke, which was all the way at the bottom of that stack. So it's a little janky when you're looking at it for the first time, especially if you're not familiar with the older versions of Photoshop. But the more you use it and get used to it, the more you know, all right, command 3, and there I am at outer glow, or what have you. So a neat little hotkey when you're inside of the layer style dial log box. Let's move along to our next image here. Uh, this is actually pretty cool. Let's um, let's just go back to our first image. I'm going to grab the background image and right, I can drag this and I can hover over my uh, whatever image and I can just let go and it's going to drop my image in place and I can move the image around and position it however I like. But did you know that when you do this, right, when you drag your image over, if you hold the shift key before you let go, hold it down, let go with the mouse, what it's going to do, I'm going to bring up free transform, it automatically centers the image or graphic that you're bringing into your PSD right to the middle of your document. So if I size this bad boy way down, you can see, boom, right to the center of the image. So that's pretty cool. Hold down the shift key and it's going to center you up with the, uh, the, the, the center of the document into which you're dragging. Another great little hotkey is when you have multiple layers, if you need to add a layer beneath the layer you have selected, typically you would have to manually select the layer behind and then go hit the new layer icon. Well, if you don't want to take the time to do that, you can just hold down the command or control key while clicking the new layer icon and it throws a layer behind the currently selected layer. Another cool thing in Photoshop is when you do have a path, whether it's a path you drew with the pen tool or one of the shape tools, if you want to convert it to a selection, instead of going to the paths panel and command or control clicking on the path thumbnail, you can use the hotkey command return or control enter on the PC and it's going to load that path as a selection just like that. Yet another cool hotkey is the ability to quickly find the transform handle. So I've got a giant graphic here which stretches beyond the uh, boundaries of my photo. And if I select that graphic and I hit Command or Control T to bring up Free Transform, I can't see the transform handles. But when you're in Free Transform, if you hit Command Zero, it zooms back the Photoshop document to the point at which you can see every corner of your transform handles. So you can go ahead and make whatever changes you like. Now, Maybe appropriately so. This next feature is called bird's eye view. So we're going to zoom way in on our little uh, our golden breasted finch or whatever the heck he is. If you uh, hold down the H button and you click and drag, Photoshop zooms you back out and gives you this really cool bird's eye view. So you can quickly navigate to a different part of the image and zoom right back to that uh, to, to the level to which you had been zoomed before, in this case 600%. So I can quickly move from his eye down to his little foot uh, over to the edge of this little seat or whatever the heck he's standing on and then back to his eye and his beak yet again. When you're using Photoshop, the Alter Option key does a lot of interesting things, from subtracting from selections to giving you that great reset button when you're in virtually any dialog box in Photoshop. One of the other cool things it does is, particularly with the Dodge and Burn tools and also with the Blur and Sharpen tools, if you're using the Burn tool, let's say, and we just want to burn this guy's forehead and make it really dark, right? We can paint over it a bunch of times to make it dark. Now, if we wanted to lighten things back up, we would go to the Dodge tool, but did you know if you hold on the Alter Option key and paint, even even with the burn tool, you can lighten things back up and the burn tool will behave like the dodge tool. So when you're using any of these tools, the dodge or the burn tool, you really only ever need to select one of the tools and you can just use the burn tool and then hold down your alter option key and use the dodge tool. Of course, vice versa works as well. Dodge to burn. Another great feature in Photoshop, another hidden hotkey is when you have a selection drawn out, you can hide the marching ants by hitting command H. That would be control H on the PC. So command or control H to hide your marching ants. All right, here in this photo, we've got some text. If you double click on your text to load up the text box, you can see my text is in fact centered. Well, if I want to align the text left, right, or center, I can just uh, hit Command Shift, that'd be Control Shift on the PC, Con uh, Command Shift L to align it left, Command Shift C to align it center, Command Shift R to align it to the right. Uh, so a neat little hotkey there that can save you some time uh, so you don't have to go digging for 
for your paragraph uh, panel or dialog box. Instead, you can just use that simple hotkey. Now, we also have some guides here. You can quickly show and hide guides. I find myself doing this all the time. Instead of going view, I'll show, guides, note the hotkey simple command semicolon so command semicolon boom guides are gone command semicolon boom they are back how do I create guides you might be thinking well probably the easiest way is to simply drag them out of rulers you can bring up the rulers by hitting command or control R um, this isn't really a hidden hotkey per se um, but it's not extraordinarily well known and it's so useful I couldn't resist including it command or control R to show the rulers command or control R to hide the rulers and of course once you have the rulers you click and drag out and boom you have a guide or guides or even more guides um, I'm gonna make all those go away and hide my ruler now one of the other really cool things you can do is you can temporarily disable snapping so if you go view snap to you can see document bounds layers grids all of this I have it set to snap to all of this stuff so when I'm working like with my yellow square here when I get close to the edge of the pink square click it snaps right to the edge of it well in order to disable this all you need to do is hold down the control key so I start dragging hold down the control key and I can move my shape as close as I want and it never snaps now on the Mac Mac, this also is the control key so for Mac and PC both control hold down the control key be able to hold down the control key after you begin clicking and dragging and it will temporarily disable the snapping uh, for that object so you can see it just snaps snap snaps when I'm not holding it and then it doesn't snap when I hold down my control key so pretty cool so did you know that if you want to use your hotkey for more than just the surface tools in Photoshop you simply hold down the shift key when you use that hotkey so if I hit the letter M it takes me to rectangular marquee tool but if I hit M again it doesn't bring me to the elliptical marquee tool if I hold down shift and hit M hey look at that elliptical marquee tool and back to rectangular marquee tool now if that's annoying you can jump up to preferences and you can go to tools and untick use shift key for tool sh uh, for tool switch if you shut this off all you then have to do is hit the hot key for that particular tool and it will automatically go M M M M M M M and we're switching through rectangular and elliptical marquee tool every time we hit the letter M one of the other really cool things is you can hit the tab key of course and tab takes away all of your panels um, now if you hit shift tab it is just going to take away your layers panel and sort of that whole panel off to the side there one of the other neat things though is if you do hit tab to get rid of all of the panels and hit shift tab once it's just going to bring back the layers panel so think of shift tab as control over these panels off here to the right side of the Photoshop user interface all right here we've got this photo of this person on a rainy street let's say we bring up Kurt Curves uh, adjustment, which is just Command M, and we place a couple uh, a couple little points here on our, our our curve line. If we want to quickly get through these curves and adjust them very finely, uh, one of the things we can do is Control Tab, and this again on the Mac is Control and Tab to get through and cycle through those points, and then just use the arrow keys to nudge those points around, and just like that, we can have a brand new uh, little curve here for our image. All right, now just a moment ago we talked about being able to cycle through tools in the in the toolbar with uh, at, by adding shift to the hotkey of that tool. Well, if you hold down the alt or option button on your keyboard and just simply click a tool one time, you can quickly cycle through that tool without having to click and hold and wait for the flyout menu to appear and land on the correct tool. Hold down your alt or option key and you can click through a tool just like that. So if we're checking out an image and we're zoomed in quite a bit like we are here over these temples of Thailand, you can use your mouse wheel to scroll up or down but did you know that if you hold down your command or control key you can use your mouse wheel and go left and right but even with that hotkey the mouse wheel is not done because if you add to the command button the command option again on PC this would be control alt and use the mouse wheel you can zoom in or out of your image and uh, rather quickly might I add one really cool thing about the move tool especially when you have a document with lots of different layers if you need to select a specific layer like let's say we can't figure out where this white box is again hypothetically let's say this PSD has you know a hundred and fifty or two hundred layers or more all you need to do is hold down the command or control key and click on that layer with the move tool and you can see it's going to activate or select that layer in the layers panel very very easily now of course you can choose to auto select layers up here in the toolbar and that's exactly what this is so if I select like this chunk here that's cut out you can see it brings me right to layer 3 If I select this chunk here it brings me down to layer 5 If I click on the rectangle again back to the rectangle I go 
I don't like to have that auto select. I like to just be able to hit the control key or command key and click on a shape and have it bring me to the layer like that. Because typically when I'm clicking on stuff with the move tool, I'm clicking on it to move it and I already have it selected in the layers panel. Um, and particularly when you're working with type, sometimes you can slip and end up clicking and dragging something completely different. So in, in my experience, auto select is a little bit more annoying and not quite nearly as helpful as it might seem initially, uh, but hey, that's just me. Now, one of the other cool things that we can do now that we have this rectangle layer selected is you can hold down your alt or option key and just nudge with an arrow key in any direction. And what we've done is we've duplicated that shape and nudged it in, now I hit the the right arrow key so I've duplicated that layer and nudged it one pixel to the right uh, if you hold down alt or option and the shift key you can duplicate a layer and nudge it 10 pixels in that direction so see if I zoom in here we have in fact nudged the shape 10 pixels over toward the right so that's gonna be it 31 little hotkeys that are going to help you in Photoshop and are hidden hotkeys. Hopefully stuff that you didn't know but now do know. Um, I love these little hotkeys. They're so amazing and so useful when you're working in Photoshop. So for all the hidden tips and tricks and features, and especially for our case here, hotkeys in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. Frank Zappa, the great musician, once said that without deviation from the norm, progress is not possible. Weasels do not rip my flesh, and I have not named my daughter Moon Unit, by the way. Tell me something that you do that is out of the norm, something that maybe other people would look at and think is strange, but you think it works for you, and it's something that helps you get your job done or be a better designer or photographer or web designer, whatever it is. Share something weird out of the norm that you do as part of like your work ritual. I would love to hear it. Make sure you also hit the like button for this tutorial. Subscribe to this channel, of course. Sign up for the newsletter. A link just appeared up in the video right there somewhere. I'm going to send you 30 free tips and tricks on how to use Photoshop faster when you sign up for the newsletter. And also follow me on social media, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can follow me everywhere.